Join us as we explore Porta Plata. From soaring peaks to hidden caves and vibrant streets, we repair our sail with, believe it or not, 5200 before crossing the treacherous Mona Passage. So pack your bags and join us as we journey into the heart of the Caribbean. Let's go. motor's 200 horsepower. It goes up, it goes down seven meters a second. The diesel will go three meters a second. Oh, electric is seven meters. Diesel engine and emergency is, so if the power goes out, we can still get up and down three meters a second. Maximum cargo is 2,900 kilograms. So if we have any big people here, let's not go. Foot to the top. 711 meters, I think it's about 1,800. I'm excited. The Porto Plata cable car is a 10 minute journey all the way to the top. It will take you 2,500 feet above sea level on top of Mount Isabel de Torres, the highest peak of Porto Plata. Once you make it to the top, you're surrounded by the best panoramic views of Porta Plata. There's a great view from up here. We are high up. We're not high, we're just high up. We <laughs> <laughs> made it to the top. There'll be a lot of salesmen up here that want to take your picture and stuff, but then they charge you to just say no. Yeah. In 1970, the Statue of Christ was erected on Mount Isabel de Torres. The aim was to promote tourism in the region. is a hike. Yeah, we're gonna exercise though. I love the rainforest. To me, the rainforest is just so full of so many living things, so many ecosystems. It's just amazing. Turtles, tarantulas, mosquitoes. Birds. Mosquitoes. Isabel de Torres is a natural reserve park that offers botanical gardens, natural caves, streams, and creeks all in perfect harmony. Down there with that. humid up here. Whew. I'm sweating. Look at the heart. Oh how cute. The heart in the jungle. It's the heart of the jungle. We've been traveling for two weeks. We have to make it to the heart. We just found the signs of civilization. We found the heart of the jungle. The heart of the jungle here in the Dominican Republic. 
Whew. It's a good thing we found it though, because I don't think I could have made it much further. I know, right? Whew. Oh, we're lucky. We oh, the heart. The heart of the jungle. That's so cool. A lot of turtles. I used to like catch, to catch turtles a lot when I was young, so maybe I should go catch some. Yeah, we're gonna find We're gonna eat it. Turtle stew? Why not? Be a friend for the dog. So I might like it. They can sleep together all day. Yeah, they gave us a sign to go this way, but then they didn't tell us which way to go. So we just gotta pick. <laughs> maybe it all goes to the same place. Split up. Whew. I haven't seen a monkey yet. I want to see out of monkey. shape. I think we're all out of shape. Yeah, very. Too many days on the boat. <laughs> Too many days at sea. <sighs> Laying down, doing nothing while we sail. And my calves are burning. It's split again, Ed. No signs. Let's go towards the generator. That's got to be a good sound. <laughs> oh, I see the Christ. to the restaurant. Aren't I quite the tour guide? Yeah. I figured we got a tour from authentic Dominican, so that's why we hired Ed. Yeah. Here is the premium one, premium here. Dominican, Cuban, Nicaraguan double wrapper, premium. I'm from three different countries, double wrap it. Premium, medium. This. Where are you from? Ocean World. <laughs> yeah. Located in the center city of Porta Plata is known as the Pink Street and the Umbrella Street. Hey, you got a lot of them. I got a lot of pigeons, don't I? No Lauren to cook a party food. Why are you on me? I'm a pirate, Lauren. I got birds. Arr. Arr. <laughs> this one wants to come with us, Lauren. This is my this is my pirate pigeon. I am getting some dog food together to go to the beach and feed the stray dogs. Yeah, Lauren's really excited to go feed the stray dogs. So we had some leftover canned dog food that I bought for Callie when she was pregnant because she was on a high protein diet, so she doesn't eat that anymore. So You're going to give it to the stray dogs? Yeah, we're going to go feed that. The good stuff. All right, I think that's enough. Right, so we have this. And then another container. And we're gonna go feed the dogs? Yep. Look at you, you're like ready to go. It's like the only time that you're out here before me because you're so excited. You gotta wait for the jump.
Off road on the scooter. Woo. Now you're really excited about finding the about feeding the dogs, but you gotta find them first. Oh, so you ate it all. You want what? You want more? Okay, we're gonna go feed the other doggy. Our go anywhere rides right here, off road. Scooters could not make it up this hill, so we are pushing them. Right now, Lauren. That one looks fat. After all the boatyard dogs are probably really fat. And before heading back to the boat, I had to stop and get some ice cream. Is this one of your favorite boat activities? Yeah. Building your puzzles? Yeah. It's like, this table is like dedicated to puzzle building. Yeah. We're building right now. Oh, a thousand feet, you stepped up? Yep. Almost done. Yeah, we just got one day to finish it. And then we're leaving for Colorado. After exploring the Dominican and having some fun, it was time to fix a bigger issue, the torn sail. So I've actually started this repair project already. I've been cutting back the leech line vinyl right here. I cut it back and pulled it back. So I can expose just the sail material. It's the sails of carbon laminate. Um, so, and then on the other side, so this is the sail side. On this side, there's a UV protector because we have a furler. So I'm currently peeling back this UV protection, trying to get it unglued so that I can expose the sail material so I can do the patch on both sides of the sail material itself. Then I'm gonna re-glue down the UV protector and sew the leech line back in um, I think this is probably the best way to fix it I'm not an expert so you know don't don't hold me to it I'll do what I can um, but yeah I gotta get the sail back going so we can make the Mona Passage head to Puerto Rico but right now it is in bad shape with that tear so that kind of hurt us on our journey down here we end up going with just the Genoa we'll get there and then we're gonna 5200 this sail um, definitely a weird thing to use 5200 on a sale, but with research, it looks like that is a permanent fix preferred method. All right, so I got the sale laid out and flattened out. I gotta do a little something to get a little flatter. So I got one wrinkle still, but here's what it looks like. I got the UV protector off enough to put the patch around it. So I need to figure out how to clean off the glue. I'm gonna need acetone or like goof off or something like that, but I gotta test it on my patch material first on a sacrificial piece just in case it eats away the adhesive for the laminate. Um, but if that all goes well, then I can glue on this side of the patch and then I can go on to the other side. Um, I'm talking to the sale guy, see if I can do it in one piece because I could just take an extra long piece and then when I'm done, I can wrap it around to the other side and glue it on the other side too. So I just gotta see what he says about that. Um, there's definitely gonna be some sewing involved here though to fix the leech tape, uh, leech line, like tape. So like learning how to fix a laminate sail is something I should definitely know before we do anything longer than we did. I mean, it was already a pain not having the sail for like two days, <laughs> a day and a half of our trip. So it's definitely gonna be a good thing for me to know. I don't think I could have fixed this anyways on our trip because of the high winds. We would have to wait till the winds died down to have it so I could pull the sail out unless we took it all the way down and like got it inside. Then I probably could have fixed it underway, but I probably would have just waited. Um, I mean, right now you can see I have it coming out of the furler. I'm just laying down on the deck. I have it, I might reorganize it before I start gluing. Um, especially cause it's a little windy. So I'm gonna put some, some stuff on it to weigh it down, make sure it doesn't try to fly away or you know, move while it's gluing. So I just had to be careful not to make a mess. So we're gonna be using lots of tape, taping around it. The advantage of this side though too, is being my first side I do is that it has, this is the side with the UV cover on it. So once I'm done, I'm gonna get some spray adhesive 
and probably glue the UV cover back down and then put a piece of sail tape over it just so that the edge doesn't have issues. Yeah, wind's definitely picking up a little. So it's starting to flop around a bit, so we'll figure that out. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for next week's video as we cross the Mona Passage and head to Puerto Rico.